The first ballad is very much a story. You, you know from the very first note that here sitting in front of you is, is the bard, the storyteller par excellence, who is telling you once upon a time And it's, uh, it's again this very famous concert scene uh, in a salon, Madame de Sainte Auvert's salon. And somebody has just come and played Liszt, and now they're, they're playing Chopin. And Madame de Cambremer, this same lady who used to play waltzes in her chateau on her own, well, she's listening to this Chopin. When he had finished the Liszt intermezzo and had begun a prelude by Chopin, Madame de Cambremer turned to Madame de Francoteau with a tender smile, full of intimate reminiscence, as well as of satisfaction, that of a competent judge, with a performance. She had been taught in her girlhood to fondle and cherish those long-necked, sinuous creatures, the phrases of Chopin, so free, so flexible, so tactile, which begin by seeking their ultimate resting place somewhere beyond and far wide of the direction in which they started, the point which one might have expected them to reach, phrases which divert themselves in those fantastic bypaths only to return more deliberately with a more premeditated reaction, with more precision, as on a crystal bowl which, if you strike it, will ring and throb <coughs> until you cry aloud in anguish to clutch at one's heart.
to a musical genre. It was a story, a story told by the troubadour and the trouvère in Provence, a story about epic deeds, heroic events, and usually supernatural beings interfered in the, the daily life of the, the mere mortals. inspired him to write ballad were those of Miskiewicz. Miskiewicz was a fellow exile. Miskiewicz was not Polish, he was Lithuanian. But Lithuanian and Poland for centuries had been a commonwealth. And so people from both countries felt very close, very close culturally, very close in spirit. Both countries had been invaded many times in Central Europe by all the surrounding countries. And so when Miskiewicz ended up in Paris, he was composing, writing poems that spoke of the struggle of his country against the invaders. And this idea of struggle is found, of course, in all his ballades. Chopin's four ballades are not mapped in any way against a particular poem, but we can still see these poems as as the little window that opens our imagination into the sound world that Chopin has created. <laughs> 